holy sacrifice. It doesn't say that of secondary holiness. However, when you look further, you see, Yochal Shani Mar Chuma, maybe this also applies to Chuma, which is a gift to the Kohen of grain, or wine and oil. So Tamal Eimer it says it. It's excluding Chuma. It says, or the Kayanim shall eat it. It is, uh, it is Kaidish Kadashim. That's excluding Chuma. That this only applies to the Chatas, not to the, to the, to the Karbanas, not to Chuma. Divri Rab Yehuda. And we're going to go back. And does, I'm sorry, Rabbi, how does it, how, how, what's the Pasuk and how does it exclude Truma? It says, all male Kayanim should eat the Chatas. But it says, should eat it. It is holy. Kaidish Kadashim, he it is holy. So that it, that it is extra. It says, all male Kayanim should eat. Uh, um, that extra it is coming to tell me. He, the other word he? No, Isa. I'm sorry. Oh, Isa. Okay. Oh, Isa. Okay. So, sure. But um, it's, well, it's a lot of times when there's a pronoun, it's, it's more inclusive because it didn't say specifically. But over here, mm-hmm. I think the whole pronoun was unnecessary. Yeah. Do they say anything in your commentary how it's how the pronoun is exclusive, is, uh, is excluding? Let me see if it says. I don't know if they uh, explain the the, the lima. Well, my commentary doesn't explain the lima. Um, it's very hard to know exactly the the grammar that they were looking at in those days to see what's the. Uh, how they how they learned out the drasha, the Malbim uh, on Chumash, the Malbim is commentary on Chumash. He says he claims that he figured it out, and he uses like the place of the of the verb in the pasuk, where, you know, how it's usually put, where the the sentence structure. That he he says he had, he figured out how the drushas are working, but um, usually in yeshiva they just say it's a pasuk. We may learn it from the pasuk. We don't know exactly, and that's how. Is this a part of the Pesach? Um, that's what we're learning. It would apply to a carbon Pesach. The only thing is a carbon Pesach wasn't cooked. The Pesach was done on a spit. What type of spit was it? Was it a metal spit or a wooden spit? Um, but could, would you be allowed to use that spit again? So you would have to cash it somehow. Right? Carbon Pesach is a, is a, coaching, is a coaching column, right? Yeah. Okay, Div uh, Rabbi Yehuda. These are the words of Rabbi Yehuda. So uh, Rabbi Yehuda basically holds that Shuma is the only thing that it doesn't apply to, but sacrifices it applies to. And the, the vessels need to be purged. Rabbi Shimon Eimer, Kachim Kadashim to Nemri Kushtifa, Kachim Kalamin to Nemri Kushtifa. Shimon says no. This is more uh, clear, easy to read in the pasuk. Sacrifices that are holy of holies, yes, they need to be purged. But secondary holiness sacrifices do not need to be purged. That's Rabbi Shimon's opinion. The Pasuk says, it is holy of holies. That means, only the holy of holies. Now, Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Yehuda are friends. They're, uh, they're students of Rabbi Akiva. Whenever it says Rabbi Shimon, and, uh, it's always Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechai. Some say that Rabbi Shimon is after the cave. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechai is before the cave. Hmm. Uh, when they give the full name, it's before he was in the cave. This is that. Did you say there's multiple Shimons? Or there um, multiple Shimons? I don't think like so. No. It, whenever it says Rib Shimon, oh, there's many times Rib Shimon talks in the Gemara. So how do you? Oh, but so it's all Rib Shimon. No, it's all Rib Shimon. It's all Rib Shimon. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Rabbi Yehuda is always Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Lai. Not Rabbi Yehuda Nasi. It's always Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Lai, who's the other student of Rabbi Akiva. My time with the Rabbi Yehuda, what's the reason for Rabbi Yehuda that he includes all the sacrifices? Me, it's Shechai Salamute Chuma, because I need a Pasuk to exclude Chuma. Michlal, that implies, Kachikalem, Tunim Rikushtifa. So what happened was, we said it applies to Kedush Kadashim. We said it doesn't apply to Chuma. You left out the middle case. He says, because you had to exclude Chuma, that must mean that all the way up to Chuma, Mm-hmm. needs uh, to be purged. The vessels need to be purged. Chuma is of much lesser holiness. 
because you have to exclude that, it means all the sacrifices until there. Okay, Reb Shimon Amalach, Reb Shimon would tell you, why do you have to exclude Truma? Aisa Kedar Marina. Actually, we're not excluding Truma. Aisa is teaching me something else. What was Aisa teaching us? That it only applies to a, a sacrifice that's, that's kosher. But if the sacrifice had some sort of um, inva- inva- invalidation, so then you would not need to, to purge the vessel. So he says that Aisa is teaching me something else, not Truma. Um, no, I, I, that's it. Um, the Gemara now asks, Truma Marika, but Truma, you don't need to purge the vessel if you cook Truma in it. But it was taught in a Braisa. A pot that was used for meat, you're not allowed to use it for milk. But if you did use it, but nice and tam, you would have to taste it. Nice and tam, we estimate, is 1 in 60. Now, we, um, we assume that uh, uh, the pot can never hold more than 60 times its, its uh, mass, its, um, its material in the, in, the, in, the, in the walls. However, we can probably make pots of very thin metal that, that's possible, a large pot of thin metal that's possible, but the average pot is assumed that it doesn't. So, if you cook milk in a meat pot, the milk would be non-kosher. Of course, it was used for that day, if the meat was used that day. Otherwise, the milk would be kosher. Say again. Say again. If the pot was used that day, if, 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 within if 24 hours. A fleshic pot? That was used within, for meat within 24 hours. Right. It's milk, so the milk is not kosher. Right. If it was used more than 24 hours ago, then the milk would be kosher, but the pot needs to be kosher. Even bitol, so even though there's bitol vishishim? No, well, the reason is because you usually don't have 60 times the material of the wall inside the container of the pot. Ah, okay. So oh. you would have to take the pot, uh, put it into water, look at the displacement, right? Put this pot into a large pot, see the water displacement, and then you measure that by what it can contain. You follow the... Because that, that's how you would measure the material. Okay. Wasn't that like uh, Archimedes thing or something? Who jumped out of the bathtub running that Because uh, he figured out how to measure the... The volume of something. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Eureka. Yeah. Okay. Um, truma, and this is our point here, if the pot was used for truma, you can't cook in it chulen. The ambitious, and if you did, benice and tam. So what are you telling me? That a pot that was used for truma, you don't need to kasher. It's not true. You do have to kasher. And if you use the truma pot, you're going to make all your food truma. So you do have to kasher. So we're going to have to figure out what we meant that we said that you don't have to kasher the truma pot. You don't have to purge it. Amar Abaya. Abaya answers, he resolves this. It's not necessary. Or loy, probably. No, it is necessary. Tricha. It's necessary, both of these halachas, each one in its own case. The Amar Mar, for what the Master said, Bishel b'miktas keli, ton merikush tifakola keli. We have a special halacha. Vessels uh, that were used for achatos need to be purged. That halacha also includes in it that if you cook the uh, uh, achatos, or a sacrifice, in a part of the vessel, you didn't fill it up to the top, you have to kasha the whole vessel. Ha truma, but if you would cook truma, like tzarech alamakim bishul, you only have to kasher the pot that you cooked in, the part of the pot that you cooked in. So you need to kasher it, but you don't need to do that special din of meriku shdifa, which is applied to sacrifices. I guess we would say the same way it goes in. That's how it go when it goes out, right? How did it spread up? How did it, if we say if we say that it spreads in the pot? How did it spread? Because it was cooked up to this level. So let's cook up to that level and it would come out the same way. That's Abaya's answer. Rav Amar, Rav says, No, it is necessary. For what the Master said, when, when you kasher a pot that's used for a carbon, you can only use water to kasher. You can't use wine. And you can't use wine that's diluted. 
right? Uh, but this, afilo biyayin, you could kasher the pot by cooking truma. wine. Truma. Afilo be truma, afilo be mazug. And even if the wine is mixed with water, or or or, uh, or just plain wine, you, you can kasher the pot. In, in the factories, this is how they kasher. They do a run. Uh, they don't. Sometimes water can uh, can damage the machines. Let's say they have a machine that's making something or whatever. They just do one run uh, at a high temperature of whatever substance usually goes to the machine, and that's how they kasher it. And, um, and sometimes so some uh, people are strict about this. They said, no, kashering needs to be done with water. You can't use it. They had a problem years ago with the chocolate. They would put some sort of uh, cocoa butter or something. I forget. They would put, put that through the machine to, uh, to kasher the machinery. And some people said no, because that substance at a room temperature is hard. So it's not considered a liquid. You need to use a liquid to kasha. Yeah. It's, uh, mm-hmm. I don't know, whatever the things, the ins and outs of these things. The kasha's business is very, uh, you know, it's technical. You have to put chocolate, chocolate syrup in it. You have to put chocolate syrup. No, chocolate. you see everyone, yeah. if everyone relies on it, see, we don't have to be stricter than the whole world. But, uh, so. Okay. Rabbi Barula Amar, <coughs> Rabbi Barula, uh, he says, Loi, no, Tzricha, uh, it's necessary, Ela Lidamar Mar, only for what the Master says, Merikush Tifa Betsoinen, Hoa Filo Bechamen. After you kosher the pot by a carbon chatas, you then have to put it into cold water. But by Truma, you only have to kosher it. But you don't have to put it into cold water afterwards. Tosfos over here points out that according to this, when we kasher pots, you don't need to put it into cold water afterwards. It says even though that's our minute to do so, but uh, according to this answer, obviously, it's only it's uh, this when we kasher, you put it into hot water and afterwards you rinse it in cold water, right? That's how we kasher. Taisa says it, that's a minute to do that, but the, that, but uh, it won't affect the, uh, the kashering of it because it's only by the carbon where that needs to be done. It's a special din. The so, Gemara says. Yes. So bidiyevin nowadays you need cold water. Bidiyevin, if you didn't do the cold water, you're fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Honey, chalamanda mariku shtifa bitzaynet. This works out well. We don't know how do you translate. It? I've been translating it purge. But I've been avoiding the um, the machlekes here. There's a machlekes what marika and shtifa means. It means to rinse. You rinse and you rinse. But um, if this works out well if marika shtifa means that you have to rinse it in cold water. Alamanda marika b'cham and shtifa b'tzaynen But if you say that you need hot water and then cold water, so then. Why is this a problem? <coughs> Why is this a problem? Um, so Truma doesn't need Mariku Shtifa because Truma only needs Chamen. What about a carbon? What about a yeah, the carbon? carbon? The carbon needs. Hot uh, truma. It's enough to have hot water, and you don't have to rinse it in cold water. But this works out well if the rinsing it is in cold water. But if the rinsing it is in hot water. And then you then you wash it off in cold water, so that should be the same din by truma. Truma that doesn't need mariku shtifa, you still use the hot water. Mari answers mishtifa yisera, that the, by a carbon you have to rinse it off ec- an extra washing in cold mm. water, after you do the hot water. But truma, you don't need to rinse it in cold water after you do the hot water. I must have explained the, the answer of the Gemara in the question, so that's why it's not working well. 
So his answer was like this. Uh, Mriko Shtifa is only cold. But Truma, you don't need to wash it in cold. It's enough to do the hot water. The Gemara asks, Mariko, that makes sense Mariko, if Mariko Shtifa is cold. But if Mariko Shtifa is hot, then what's the difference between, or Mariko is hot, then what's the difference between Truma? Both of them have, uh, have hot water. So the Gemara answers that no, uh, they may both have hot water, but you know, the cold water afterwards is only on a carbon, but not, it's not required for Truma. Okay, let's stop over here. We're going to have a problem on Sunday learning, because Sunday is Tishba. Mm. So...